Mumbai, a modern metropolis whose history fades rapidly into obscurity. The name Mumbai derives from a local goddess Mumba Devi. The city's history goes back to the formation of seven islands on which it stretches. Kolaba, Mazgaon, Parel, Mahim, Verli, Bombay Island and Old Women's Island. 200 years ago, on November 26, 1804, 17 Englishmen met in this city to form the Literary Society of Bombay. The meeting was initiated by Sir James McIntosh, a Chief Justice of erstwhile Bombay High Court, as he saw in the city an intellectual desert. Its aim was to promote useful knowledge, particularly that immediately connected with India. When they started studying and particularly when they started studying the Sanskrit literature and they came across books on philosophy and books on all various, all different subjects, the lofty speculations of the Upanishads, then they realized that this was not a uh, civilization of people you can ignore. This was a rich civilization. What they founded with the mission to learn more about the principal position of British Empire in India and to present the Orient to the West has grown into a temple of Indology, the Asiatic Society of India. I think because it was started, as you know, in 1804, when the British presence was uh, taking the lead in not just in government and politics, but also in a study particularly of the Orient and uh, Indology. There was this interest on the part of several Englishmen in this area. After the Royal Asiatic Society of Great Britain and Ireland was established in London in 1823, the Literary Society of Bombay became its affiliate and in 1830, the name Bombay Branch of Royal Asiatic Society or BBRAS came into being. The Bombay Geographical Society merged with it in 1873, followed by the Anthropological Society of Bombay in 1896. That's how this society, which was actually a branch of the London uh, Society at that time, uh, the, this group of people who wanted to uh, further research in this area and general learning and study uh, started the society. It was, uh, it was the Bombay branch of the Asiatic Society, you see. In 1954, the body was separated from the Royal Asiatic Society and renamed the Asiatic Society of Bombay. BBRAS became a unique case of a sapling becoming a branch. The Asiatic Society of Mumbai is based out of Town Hall, among Mumbai's most majestic heritage buildings dating back to 1833. Plans for construction of the Town Hall had taken off in 1811. Colonel Thomas Copper, then known as the finest architect engineer in India, designed the building. A sum of rupees 10,000 raised by the then Literary Society of Bombay was initially budgeted for the construction of a museum and library. There is a flight of 30 steps leading to the entrance of the town hall. The entrance is adorned with Grecian portico and eight impressive Doric style pillars. The entire construction is made of stone brought from England and designed in a neoclassical fashion. The staircases are a spiral and the terraces are adorned with wrought iron. Within the building, the floors are covered in ancient wood. The first gem was the finding that the soaring pillars in the main hall were cast iron and not plaster as they were believed to be. The hall also boasts of a collection of remarkable marble statues of Indian patrons of the 19th century.
It acquired its present name in 2002. The society is funded by an annual grant from the Central Government of India. Either the Ministry of Culture must uh, support uh, grants, additional grant, or some philanthropist has to come forward. And uh, we are, I think, pinning a bit of hope on the new CA corporate social responsibility, uh, which has been uh, an obligation which has been put on the um, big corporations. Maybe they will also get attracted and uh, make uh, big contributions. In the early days, only Europeans could become member of this society. But a realization set in soon that India could not be studied in the absence of its natives. Sir Manikji Kursetji became the first Indian member in 1840. Down the years, leading Bombayites, including Jagannath Shankar Seth, Kavazji Jahangir, Bhautaji Lad, Bhagwan Lal Indraji, and Dorab Tata became its members. They contributed to the corpus and donated their personal collection of books. The tradition continues. When Indians came here, then they had a very important role just like Dr. Bhaudaji, who became the first vice president, Indian was vice president. And uh, then he was made uh, lifetime uh, vice president. Mahamukhopadhyay Dr. P. V. Kane worked at the society's offices in Bombay on his multi-volume research work, History of Dharmashastra, that earned him the Bharat Ratna. The BBRAS has taken into fold many smaller society, the Medical and Literary Library, the Geographical Society of Bombay, the Medical and Physical Society, the Agri Horticulture Society, and the Literary and Scientific Society. Besides their own respected ancestries, these societies brought with them large libraries. The present-day Asiatic Society of Mumbai is unrivaled in the richness of its antiquarian source material. Over the last century and more, the society has come to be recognized as an intellectual storehouse. It's a unique organization and a landmark of the city. A library, a research institution, a museum. Encouraging research in languages, philosophy, arts and the natural and social sciences in relation to Asia in general and India in particular. And over the years, because once Indians were allowed to become members and that was many years later, that uh, our Indian scholars in this area, like Bhaudaji, Lad um, and others, um, they continued this area of interest and study. And therefore, we, our library uh, is known perhaps more as a research library and because of the old manuscripts that we've got. And that we have scholars coming very many a time from abroad. Sir John Malcolm, then Governor of Bombay, praised the palatial structure, saying, It is the most magnificent structure that taste and munificence combined have as yet erected in India. The town hall building called Tondal during its early days is among the last remnants of Victorian Mumbai preserved to this day. And it stands as an emblem to inspire research and house treasures of literature, science and the oriental arts going back centuries. The society's library has a stock of over 1 lakh books, of which nearly 15,000 are classified as rare and valuable. First, the collection of books and manuscripts. We have many, many uh, rare books, valuable books, books that uh, perhaps are not uh, available in other libraries. Our total collection is uh, over 250,000 books. Um, so um, people come to refer to them, read them, 
and uh, the ones that are uh, uh, published prior to 1920 are given only with special permission. The newspapers and periodicals date back as far as two centuries ago. Take a look at the copies of the Times of London announcing India's freedom on August 15, 1947. Also preserved here are priceless artifacts and over 3000 ancient manuscripts in Persian, Sanskrit and Prakrit. Most of them are on paper, some are on palm leaves. There is a scanner, um, uh, a large size scanner and of a very um, high resolution which if we can afford to buy it will enable us to preserve those big you know, manuscripts and uh, reproduce them that way in digitized form. The real jewels in the crown are one of the only two known original copies of Dante's Divine Comedy. This is the one of the only two copies in the world. Right. And uh, you know this is fully decorated still there's right. What is the language? Of, so in Italian. It's in Italian. Yeah. Okay. See here. The original manuscript of Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri dates back to second half of 15th century, a richly illustrated codex on parchment. It was given to the society by Mont Stuart Elphinstone, Governor of Bombay and the President of Society from 1819 to 1827 and bears his signature. In 1930, the Italian government under Benito Mussolini offered the society one million pounds to buy the manuscript calling it an Italian national treasure. Mussolini believed that offer could not be refused, but to his surprise, the society turned down his request, saying the manuscript was donated to it by an ex-member, hence it was their property. The manuscript of Shahnama of Firdosi, written in 1853. It was written in Persian. This is in the 15th century, 14th century, I mean 1415. Just see here. This is also well illustrated, Ji. decorated, and these are the golden um, type colors which still you can see the shining over here. The Aranakya Parvat that was written in 16th century, it's a manuscript that contains illustrated text from the Mahabharat and is written in Sanskrit. Chapter is there. This is Aranya Parva. Who authored it? Mahabharat is authored by Vyasa. No, is it the Tika or the... No, no, original one. Original one, yes. But what they have done in Sanskrit only, of course. And this is written, whatever story is here will be illustrated by this pictures pictures yeah so you can see here pandav going to this thing for fighting five uh, buddhist caskets excavated in the ancient port town of sopara near the suburb of nala sopara the mortal remains or belongings are buried in a stupa of any sand mm -hmm. then in that case uh, care was taken mm -hmm. and it was put in usually the precious you can say materials so there is copper which is very auspicious, mm -hmm. then there is silver casket, mm -hmm. within that a stone casket mm -hmm. and in that a crystal casket and the last was the most precious which is of, which is of gold and inside you will find the remains of the pot of the Buddha, begging bowl of the Buddha you can call it popularly. The numismatic collection of nearly 12,000 coins include a gold coin of the reign of Kumar Gupta I, a rare gold mohar of Akbar's time, and coins issued by Shivaji. A gold coin belonging to Akbar. Mm -hmm. Only two or three specimens of this type are supposed to be in the world. And we are very proud to have one specimen with us. How old they it are? Is. They, they are of the times of Akbar, issued by Akbar himself. 
and issued from the Agra Mint in uh, in the year 791. These are the Buddhist relics from Sopara. Going into the society's basement is like entering another world. The past comes to life in many forms and it starts on the way to the basement. As the iron spiral staircase winds down to the lower level. This mixes easily with the modern space conserving rolling shelves. Books, manuscripts, maps and the heady scent of old paper fill the space. So India was at that time, India was a hub. <laughs> All the material coming from Southeast Asia <laughs> land, <laughs> used to land here. <laughs> from here there are two ways. Either you can go via uh, old silk route <laughs> or uh, through this. This is 1870. This is 1870 map. Yeah. So about uh, 150 years old. 150 years old map. Takes a while to realize that everything here is priceless. So all the maps are from British period only. Before that, there were very few Maratha maps, but uh, they are not very easily traceable now. It is mentioned in somewhere. So all the maps. Uh, we are seeing now or we have are uh, made by Britishers mm -hmm. and some other uh, European country. On a daily basis and particularly during annual stock taking, books that show signs of age are sent to basement for preservation, a process that is laborious and time consuming. जैसे कि जो बहुत रेयर बुक्स है जो रेयर बुक सिलेक्शन कमेटी यहाँ पर लेके आते थे और ये जो पुराने बुक्स है जो इसे अभी एक तो रिबाइंडिंग नहीं हो सकते हैं, इसके पेजेस बहुत फटे हुए हैं। ये बुक कितनी पुरानी है ये बुक है 1864 की है जो 150 साल से ज्यादा पुरानी हो चुकी है और इसे एक बॉम्बे के बारे में बहुत बहुत ही रेयर बुक है जो प्रिजर्व करना बहुत जरूरी है तो इसमें जो पेजेस आपको एलोइज दिख रहे हैं या फिर कुछ डे स्पॉट्स है ये सब की वजह से ये बुक फ्रेजाइल हो रही है टुकड़े पड़ रहे हैं तो इसे प्रिजर्व करना बहुत जरूरी है हाँ। और ये प्रिजर्वेशन की प्रोसेस बहुत आ, अलग अलग स्टेज में से निकलती है जैसे डीएसडिफिकेशन करना है उसके स्टेन रिमूव करना है उस डीएसडिफिकेशन में हम उसे क्लीन किया जाते हैं क्लीन करने के बाद उसे डीएसडिफिकेशन होने के बाद जैसे कि हम आप यहाँ देख रहे हैं कि ड्राई वो पेजेस ड्राई किए जाते हैं फिर ड्राई करने के बाद सब पेजेस कलेक्ट होकर ये किए जाते हैं और उसके बाद एक स्पेशल इसे लास्ट जो है कि मैनुअल प्रोसेस की जाती है उसे टिश्यूइंग कहते हैं जो कि जापानीज टिश्यू पेपर से उसे बोथ साइड से लेमिनेट किया जाता है वो ये प्रोसेस है मैनुअल प्रोसेस है और ये जो ऑल ओवर ये जो लेबोरेटरी में काम चलता है इसमें जो भी कोई बाइंडिंग मटेरियल हो धागा हो ये सब नॉन एसिडिक मटेरियल से किया जाता है और इसमें अहम बात है कि ये जो लेबोरेटरी में काम होने के बाद जो भी फाइनल मटेरियल है वो सब रिवर्सिबल प्रोसेस है ताकि यह हम जो प्रोसेस कर रहे हैं उसकी गारंटी है हंड्रेड ईयर्स मगर हंड्रेड ईयर्स के बाद ही ये प्रोसेस उसे रिवर्सबल रिवर्सबली कर सकते हैं और ताकि जैसे बाजार में लैमिनेशन किया जाता है वो बाद में निकलता नहीं है मगर हमने जो लैमिनेशन किया है वो रिवर्स होता है वापस डीएसिफिकेशन किया जाता है जैसे आप ये देख सकते हैं ये 1827 की बुक है देखिए 1826 की है और ये बुक करके मुझ काम होने के बाद कितने साल हो चुके हैं मैं 97 में ये बुक की हुई है ये बुक प्रिजर्व करके 97 सेवन मीन्स अभी कम से कम 18 ईयर हो चुके हैं इसे भी वही लेमिनेशन प्रोसेस की है आज तक वो बुक के पेजेस अच्छे हैं द हेवी वुडन कैबिनेट्स आर स्टार्ट विद बुक्स दैट आर मोर देन 500 हंड्रेड ईयर्स ओल्ड द ओल्डेस्ट इन द कलेक्शन डेटिंग बैक टू फोर्टीन नाइन्टी इज ऑन ग्री ग्रामा The oldest is a Buddhist palm leaf manuscript dating back to 1280, which is known as which is and illustrated with colors that remain vivid. The work was donated by Bhagwan Lal Indraji, the 19th century Indian scholar known for his contributions to archaeology. In the 12th century, written in the 12th century and written on a palm leaf. This is in Sanskrit. The language is Sanskrit, but the script written is Kutila. They are saying. Kutila characters. Kutila is the name of mm -hmm. that script, mm -hmm. and it is written in that. Explain the Buddhist philosophy. You can see this whole scene between mm -hmm. in those days, just to tie correctly this and this. These pictures 
will explain to you the whole life cycle as well as see you. the philosophy or the teachings of lord buddha you can see here with a history that goes back 200 years there is an urgent need for conservation and preservation of the society's holdings activities of the asiatic society fall into three broad categories holding that includes preserving conserving cataloging and documenting holdings research which includes generating supporting and disseminating research in its chosen fields and public interface that provides a forum for debate and discussions on the topic of public interest see india has a very glorious past but the present generation many of them are not aware of this glorious past of india and those who are aware but because they were pursuing some professional course in spite of being uh, curious to know there was no time they could not do that so, so we have some students here from very diverse uh, background this is the micro film lab it has two cameras the larger one is for the thousands of broadsheet publications the society has and the smaller one for the books that can be filmed without having their binding broken the lab is equipped to develop the film as well as duplicate rolls thymol an oxygen reducing substance is the primary chemical in the process oldest jo book hai wo bar bar research karne se original kharab hone se jo koi scholar aaye research karne ke liye usko hmm. microfilm ke through se wo research kar sakta hai kaise padhai kar sakta hai uske liye ye to microfilm camera hai hmm. yahan par uh, microfilm roll laga hua hai hmm. yahan par uh, hmm. filming chalu hai hmm. just like hmm तो अब तक तकरीबन कितनी किताबों की माइक्रो फिल्मिंग आप लोग कर चुके हैं अराउंड 3600 बुक्स माइक्रो फिल्म हुए हैं। नन ऑफ दीज बुक्स विल एवर बी शूट बट दे आर अवेलेबल ऑन माइक्रो फिल्म फॉर रिसर्चर्स एंड मेंबर्स। कॉस्ट्स रुपीज फाइव थाउजेंड टू पुट ईच बुक थ्रू द कॉन्जर्वेशन प्रोसीजर यहाँ से अराउंड 3600 के बुक्स में से बहुत से बुक्स पूरा में पुराने हैं अराउंड एटीन हंड्रेड एंड टेन फिफ्टीन एटीन हंड्रेड एंड ट्वेंटी एट्स के आसपास एक्चुअली टाइटल मैं आपको बता के देखे बता सकता हूँ द सोसाइटी हैज एन अडोप्ट बुक स्कीम अडोप्टेड बुक्स हैव द नेम्स ऑफ देर पेरेंट्स इंस्क्राइब्ड इन साइड सपोज यू वॉन्ट दैट ए पर्टिकुलर बुक शुड बी प्रिजर्व you see something some book and you want to be preserved then you have to pay 7500 we will preserve it and we will put your name the society also publishes its transactions under the title transactions of the library society of bombay in 1841 the asiatic society of bombay started publishing its journal titled journal of the bombay branch of royal asiatic society from 1955 to 2002 it published its journal under the name journal of the asiatic society of bombay and from 2002 its journal has been published under the name journal of the asiatic society of mumbai connoisseurs believe that the imposing facade of the society should not be the only reason for it being a popular city landmark this grand exterior is also a known backdrop for various films and advertisements though these appearances keep the society alive in public memory a lot needs to be done to keep it relevant in the changing times top dignitaries visiting its hallowed portals share their thoughts this institution is certainly the inheritor of remains of great many people not just our own indians but great many people who came to rule our land but the goodness in them the curiosity in them the scholarship in them propelled them 
to go into academic pursuits whose results are there with us. And therefore, as has been rightly said, we need to remember them. Another plan to revitalize the institution is by attracting more people to the society. Whether as members or via the Adopt a Book scheme or to the Literary Club which holds book readings. The society also runs courses on Indology. The idea is to incentivize the subject by relating it to mainstream jobs and academics. 91 years old S. Venkatraman has recently finished this book on the advent and history of Indian Railways. The quest for authentic research and documents brought him here from his hometown Chennai. And he did stumble upon a treasure trove of information. Indian Railways Britishers were made 1863. Here I am getting the information in 1850, 1840, 1830, 1821. So such rare books. Delos report, I got it from here. Nobody else could give me. Nobody else could give me. I tried in British library in, in Chennai. Not possible. I went to Asiatic library in Calcutta. They don't have. Only here you got the book. Some institutions, it is said, reflect history and some contribute to it. The Asiatic Society of Mumbai is an amalgamation of both. And these yellowing pages, in these centuries-old books contain innumerable tales of an era gone by, many still waiting to be told. The relevance of such institutions as repositories of treasures of civilization remains unmatched and sublime. The Asiatic Society of Mumbai remains a magnet to all those yearning to peep into the past. And herein lies the final redemption. <laughs>